but I'm sorry I haven't a clue. The antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week at the Royal Court Theatre in the fine city of Liverpool. The city, yeah. the city we see today was built on trade with the New World. In 1857, Henry Tate started to import and refine sugar in Liverpool. Having amassed his first million pounds, Tate treated himself to a beautiful yacht, which, when not cruising the French Riviera, he moored on the Mersey next to his factory. As his workers gazed in awe, Tate encouraged them to work hard, explaining that if they toiled 12 hours a day, seven days a week, without ever taking holidays in a few years, he'd have a bigger yacht. <laughs> Tate's financial success lay in selling sugar in previously unimagined quantities. After 30 years of trading in Liverpool, he'd given the city's people a fine library, an art gallery, and type 2 diabetes. <laughs> In the early 20th century, Liverpool thrived as the home of the great transatlantic shipping lines. At the industry's peak, it was said that 15% of the population worked for Cunard. The rest didn't work very hard at all. <laughs> uh, that one shipping line joke of the year, 1907. <laughs> In tandem with the shipping industry, marine salvage companies grew here, and they funded the development of diving techniques by the scuba pioneer George Williamson. It was Williamson who worked out why it's better to fall backwards off the side of the boat. He found that if he fell forwards, he always ended up back in the boat. <laughs> As the Great Depression hit Britain's industry in the 1930s, unemployment in Liverpool soared and thousands living in tiny terraced slum houses found themselves unable to pay their rent. Facing eviction, they barricaded doors and fought pitched battles with their landlord's bailiffs. Radio 4 listeners will naturally sympathise. It can be a real pain trying to get rid of awkward tenants. <laughs> With more than 1,500 animals in 32 acres, Liverpool's Knowsley Zoological Park is a world leader in the field of animal research and is particularly proud of its work in primate sociology. For hundreds of years, it was a common belief that apes can actually speak just like us, but only choose to do so when we're not there. A bit like the French. <laughs> Liverpool's most famous sons must be the Beatles. Uh, when the Beatles returned here to perform in 1963, fans pelted them with jelly babies after George Harrison had said he liked them. We understand that Justin Bieber is quite partial to urine-filled condoms. <laughs> The original Beatles drummer, Pete Best, was replaced by the band just weeks before their first UK single was released. Best became a civil servant and went to work at Garston Job Centre as a careers advisor, eventually rising to be head of irony. <laughs> On the Beatles' earlier recordings, the drums were played by a session musician called Andy White, who was paid a daily fee of 10 shillings. Now, for those who don't understand pre-decimal currency, that's equivalent to 10.0 shillings. <laughs> The, uh, the equivalent of 50 pence a day doesn't seem much, but in those days you could go into a department store with a couple of quid in your pocket and come out with a, a new wristwatch, a fine pair of shoes and some silk shirts and still have enough left for your taxi home. Of course, CCTV put a stop to that. <laughs> In 1966, after John Lennon remarked that the Beatles were bigger than Jesus, their records were burnt, their concerts picketed, and they stopped touring forever. But the Beatles weren't the last group of four who should have given up performing 50 years ago. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Jeremy Hardy. 
on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Rory Bremner. And taking her place at the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the ever lovely Samantha. <laughs> Okay, let's get going with the first round. In this game called In My Pants, whoever makes me laugh is the winner. So buckle up, we should be out by Boxing Day. <laughs> Teams, your task is to suggest book titles, while mine is simply to say the phrase In My Pants immediately after each title without raising a smile in the unlikely event that you are able to make me laugh. And it does have to be uh, a proper laugh rather than just a smile, because you know, I smile, I'm like, they call me baby face, because when I smile, it's usually wind. <laughs> so, if you do make me laugh, Samantha will be awarding points. So, Tim, you can start. I know what you did last summer. In my pants. <laughs> Barry. Little women. In my pants. <laughs> Rory. The road to little dribbling. <laughs> In my pants. Jeremy. The pit and the pendulum. <laughs> In my pants. Winnie the Pooh. In my pants. We need to talk about Kevin. <laughs> In my pants. I know why the caged bird sings. In my pants. The sun also rises. In my pants. Room on the broom. In my pants. The turn of the screw. In my pants. The remains of the day. In <laughs> It's a stupid game anyway. <laughs> Time for a musical round now, as I ask the teams to play one song to the tune of another. Now, this shouldn't be confused with its rural derivative, one song to the tune of an otter, which, uh, which like Anton Deck, is neither big nor clever. Piano accompaniment will be provided by Colin Sell, and listeners will be interested to know Colin has recently been remastering the classic platters. Weatherspoons say they'll be rolling out his meat feast sharers for the autumn. Okay, we'll start with you, Tim. I'd like you to sing the words of Anarchy in the UK by the Sex Pistols to the tune of Those Were the Days. An antichrist, I am an anarchist. Don't know what I want, but I know how to get it. I want to destroy the passerby, cause I wanna be anarchy. Anarchy for the UK, it's coming sometime, and maybe I give a wrong time stop a track. Think I know future dream it is a sharp escape Cause I wanna be an Thank you, thank you, Tim. In nature that's a cry for help. <laughs> Barry, I'd like you to sing the words of My Dinger Ling by Chuck Berry to the tune of Climb Every Mountain. <laughs> Ding 
moving. <laughs> Could someone check Barry is still moving? <laughs> okay, your turn, Jeremy. I'd like you to sing the words. Uh, no, no, no. The Beatles let Ringo sing occasionally, and we're going to let Jeremy sing. Right? I, I'd like you to sing the words of the theme from Ghostbusters to the tune of Lou Reed's Perfect Day. <laughs> If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call Ghostbusters? <laughs> if there's something weird and it don't look good, who are you going to call Ghostbusters? <laughs> oh, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I afraid of no ghosts if you are seeing things running through your head who can you call ghostbuster And finally, Rory, I would like you to sing the words of Single Ladies by Beyonce <laughs> to the tune of Who Do You Think You're Kidding, Mr. Hitler? <laughs> all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, now put your hands up, cause if you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. Up in the club, we just broke up, I'm doing my own thing, you decided to dip, but now you want a trip, cause another brother noticed me, I'm up on him, he up on me. Don't pay him any attention Cos I cried my tears for three good years You can't be mad at me Cos if you liked it Then you should have put a ring on it Rory Brenner Rory Brenner Thank you so it was a bit difficult when you start clapping without realising how long it's going to go on for. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because you're stuck with it by then. <laughs> okay, next up is a brand new game called Spot the Intro. So fingers on buzzers, teams. The sooner you buzz with the correct answer, the more points you win. Uh, Rory, yes, Rory. What do you think it is? Is it? Uh, is it Chopin's Nocturne number 20 <laughs> in C-sharp performed by Vladislav Spielmann? Well, let's hear some more. <laughs> yes, it is. It is indeed Chopin's Nocturne number 20 performed by Vladislav Spielmann. Well spotted there, Rory. Not, not an easy one to start with. Okay, here's another one. What follows this? Jeremy. I think that's Sibelius' Corellia Suite, Opus 11, Intermezzo Moderato. Hmm. Well, let's hear some more. Correct. Well spotted, Jeremy. It is Corellia Suite, Opus 11, Intermezzo Moderato. Quite a rare recording, that one. Um, <laughs> let's go again. What is this famous piece of music? And Tim's first on the buzzer this time. So, what was that famous intro, Tim? I'm pretty certain that's the Allegro from Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music. <laughs> five, two, five, played by the Berlin Philharmonic. What? <laughs> that, Tim, that was Chuck Berry's intro to Johnny B. Good. <laughs> one of 
one of the most famous rock and roll tracks ever recorded. I can't believe you didn't get that. Sorry about that, everyone. It's, um... Well, let's have, uh, let's have another intro, please. No one? No. <laughs> okay, let's, um... Let's uh, move on to another one. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. And that's Barry on the buzzer. Barry, what was that piece of music? Well, Jack, it's a bit of a wild guess here. Is that Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 6, the pastoral in F, Opus 68? Well, I think Barry Ever, the wily old fox, has done it again. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Let's go again. Fingers on buzzers. What is this famous piece of music? Hoodies! Uh, Tim again. I definitely know this one. It's... Oh, and I see the clock has beaten us. So we move on to a game which celebrates some of our language's best-known adages and time-honoured aphorisms. Teams, I'd like you to suggest updated versions of various well-known English proverbs and sayings in an effort to make them more relevant to life in the 21st century. So as we know, everything can be reworked and improved, as Bruce Willis found out in his recent Welsh action film, Hard Die with a Vengeance. <laughs> We'll start with you, Jeremy. Um, an Englishman's home is... Unaffordable. <laughs> Barry, you now. A, a journey of a thousand miles begins with... Are we there yet? <laughs> Rory, two's company, but three's... A super injunction. <laughs> Tim, a good man is hard. Full stop. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Love thy neighbour as... Someone has to feed the cats when you're away. <laughs> Barry, after a storm comes a... Prime Minister with wellies on. <laughs> Rory, there's no accounting for... Oh, Amazon, Google, <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> and finally, Tim, never go to bed on an... Widdicombe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here are some for any of you to have a go at. You can't have too much of a good... E. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut off your nose to... Make it easy to put your jumper on, just get a cardi. <laughs> Don't change horses... Into a lasagna. <laughs> carp A... Carp B, Carp C, <laughs> or Carp D. One might as well be hanged for a sheep as... Hung like a donkey. <laughs> Familiarity breeds in East Anglia. <laughs> Behind every great man there's an arse. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like Twitter. <laughs> easy calm, easy. Apologize. <laughs> Softly, softly, catchy. Chlamydia. <laughs> and finally, don't let the sun go down on... Your newspaper order. Our next game is entitled Stars in Their Ears and is based on Stars in Their Eyes, the TV favourite with its catchphrase, Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Roy Orbison or Shirley Bassey, depending on the amount of smoke. <laughs> in this round, the teams will pretend to be well-known celebrities singing well-known songs while Colin Sell provides musical accompaniment. You're first to go, Jeremy, so tell us who are you going to be tonight. 
Tonight, Jack, I'm going to be Julian Clary. <laughs> okay, Jeremy, I'd like you, please, to provide us with a rendition of the song Rawhide in the style... <laughs> in the style of Julian Clary. <clears throat> Rolling, 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 though the streams are swollen, keep them doggies rolling, or hide. <laughs> Through rain and wind and weather, hell bent for leather, wishing my gal was by my side. <laughs> All the things I'm missing, good little's love and kissing, are waiting at the end of my ride. <laughs> Move them on, head them up, move them up, head them on, move them up, head them on, roll hide. Cut them out, ride them in, ride them in, cut them out, cut them out, ride them in, roll hide. All right, Barry, who are you going to be for us tonight? Um, Tommy Cooper. <laughs> okay, Barry, I'd like you to give us a rendition of the song My Way. <laughs> in the style of Tommy Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> and now, the end is near. What do you mean, get off or just come on? <laughs> and so I face the final curtain. I went to the doctor this morning. I said, I keep thinking I'm a set of curtains. He said, pull yourself together. <laughs> my friend, I'll say it clear. I'll say my case. Of which I'm certain. I said to the doctor, my back hurts in three places. He said, don't go to those places. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived a life that's full. I've travelled each and every highway. My wife walks five miles a day. She's 50 miles away now. <laughs> and more, much more than this. I did it my way, like that. No, like this. Regrets. I've had a few. I got on an escalator It said dogs must be carried, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, too few to mention. I said to the doctor, when I lift my arms up, it hurts. He said, don't lift your arms up. <laughs> I did what I had to do, and saw it through. Without exemption, I planned his chartered course, <laughs> his careful step along the byway. I was in the queue at the post office this morning, and a guy in front of me was holding a banana up. I said, why are you holding that banana up? And he looked and said, oh no, I've eaten my gun. <laughs> and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, finally, Tim and Rory, I understand you'll be performing a duet for us. Um, yeah. So tell us who you are going to be tonight. Uh, well, I'm going to be Prince Charles. Who are you going to be, Tim? I'm going to be the Queen. <laughs> OK, Tim and Rory, would you please provide us with a rendition of I Remember It Well in the style of the Queen and Prince Charles. <laughs> oh, mother mine. I'm head of state. <laughs> I'm first in line. You have to wait. <laughs> ah, yes. I remember it well. When I was born, your happy tears. We had to drag you by your ears. <laughs> ah, yes. I remember it well. But you still carry out your royal offices. Why you still sell organic sausages? <laughs> You're good at pomp and circumstance. You chat to trees and talk to plants. <laughs> ah, yes. yes. We, we remember, remember it well. well. Well, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time to fit in a quick round of Motrist's songbook. Samantha tells us she's a vintage car enthusiast, and only recently at a rally she got a surprise shunt from a little Morris. 
fiddled under the hood of a reliant robin before rolling her sleeves up and grappling with the big end of an oily Austin. <laughs> So, teams, while I drag myself back from 1957, I'd like you to suggest the titles of songs likely to be popular with an audience of motoring enthusiasts. So, Jeremy, can you please start? Oh, dear, you do what you do to me. Uh, Barry? Luck be a larder tonight. Tim? Dipstick on your collar. Rory? Highway to Hull. <laughs> Fiddler on the roof rack. Can't love you because your fit's too big. <laughs> My old man's a Datsun. <laughs> I don't like Mondays. <laughs> Itsy beatsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot Lamborghini. <laughs> hey, you're a dormobile? <laughs> Day will come and me wanna go home. Citroen on the dock of the bay. Up on the roof, that's where you left the bloody shopping. <laughs> Lorry seems to be the hardest word. <laughs> if you liked it, you should have put a wheel clamp on it. <laughs> it's fun to stay at the DVLA. <laughs> High and I will always love you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the silicon implants of time light up the ladies' day of destiny and the fake tanned footballer of fate surreptitiously pees into the pint pot of posterity, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Samantha and myself and our audience here in Liverpool, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Pryor, Jeremy Hardy, Tim Brooke Taylor and Rory Bremner have been given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
And taking her place at the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the ever delightful Samantha. Well, we start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good dictionary is essential for learning the correct use of similar terms. For example, many people don't understand the difference between the words Hindi and Urdu. Well, Hindi is an Indic language derived from Sanskrit, which is widely spoken in northern India, whereas Urdu is something you get in the Liverpool branch of Tony and Guy. <laughs> Uh, the meanings of words are constantly changing, Tim. So your suggestions, please, of any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Uh, Rory, maybe you could start. Shingles. Game of tennis with Sean Connery. <laughs> Barry. Brexit. Breakfast cereal laxative. <laughs> Tim. Carbuncle. A relative who only eats potatoes, bread and pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Liverpool Organ sharing scheme <laughs> Fairy What cats feel like in Liverpool <laughs> Forensic Overseas vomit <laughs> Incorrect A password you never forget <laughs> Sec secular, how the Queen describes her wheels. <laughs> Onesie, what the Queen calls a selfie. <laughs> Kinship, annoying boat. <laughs> Entities, an indeterminate number of breasts. <laughs> Apocalypse. Get your mouth ready to kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> Bathos, the anticlimactic musketeer. <laughs> e ethos, the Yorkshire musketeer. <laughs> Ebola, Yorkshire rat. <laughs> Nectarine, giraffe pate. <laughs> Testimony, a load of bollocks. <laughs> Battery, place to leave your bat when you go on holiday. <laughs> Feckless, Irish virgin. <laughs> Dermatology, the study of Irish names. Aspic, don't do that. Well, the team's uh, going <laughs> to sing along with some well-known discs now in the game called Pick Up Song. Now, these days, rare vinyl commands a fortune at auction. The holy grail for collectors is the debut album by the first lady of Spanish jazz, Paella Fitzgerald. <laughs> Samantha will spin the discs and each of you should sing along to your records until Samantha turns the volume down. If, on its return, you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points, and points mean a woeful, lemming-like response indicative of the true malaise at the heart of contemporary Britain. <laughs> what do points mean? Prizes! And this week's prize is the latest development in home gadgetry. It's this handy Lakeland catalogue shredder. <laughs> Barry, you're to start, and I'd like you to accompany Liverpool band The Swinging Blue Jeans singing The Hippie Hippie Shakes. For goodness sake!
Yeah, come on a chase. Oh, it's in the bag. Oh, the hit, 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 hit me shake. I suppose we've all made phone calls to A&E like that in the past. Right? <laughs> You're next, Tim. I'd like you to accompany little Jimmy Osmond singing Long Haired Lover from Liverpool. <laughs> You till I'm old and grey, which I am now. I'll be your long haired lover from Liverpool. You'll be my sunshine days. Yeah. <laughs> proof, if proof were needed, you can never really be sure who you're talking to on the internet. <laughs> You now, Rory, uh, would you accompany the scaffold singing Thank You Very Much? Thank you very much for the ATI and thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much for the ATI and thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much for the birds and bees. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much for the birds and bees. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much for the family circle. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much for the family circle. Thank you very much. Thank you very, 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 very much. You don't know how much they all mean. They seem much better in my dreams. Thank you, Rory Bremner. So finally, uh, Jeremy, can you please accompany Liverpool Band Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark singing Enola Gay? Enola Gay, you should have stayed at home yesterday. Oh, words can't describe the feeling and the way you lie. These games you play, they're gonna end in more than tears someday. Oh, I know the game, it shouldn't ever have to end this way. It's at 15, and that's the time that it's always been. We got a message on the radio. Conditions normal, and you're coming home. Of course, what you're not aware of is the incredible amount of support and specialist help it's taken to get Jeremy to this stage. <laughs> Well, um, the, uh, the teams are going to treat us to some acting now in the miming round called Sound Charades. Um, this is a variation on the old TV favourite, Give Us a Clue, a show that catapulted Lionel Blair to fame and sadly not into the English Channel. <laughs> Tim and Rory, you're to start, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And uh, for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. The Night Manager. The Night Manager. Thank you. Off you go, Tim and Rory. It's three words, and it's a television program, and it goes like this. All right, now, is everyone here, uh, Sir John? Uh, yes, boss, I'm still here. Uh, Sir Michael? My name is yes, but... yes, Sir Michael, I think we know that now. Uh, Sir Roger? Sir Roger! D sorry, sir, I nodded off there. 
Sir, uh, Sir Alan? Yes, boss? You're fired. You can't fire me just like that. Only you? joking. Uh, where's Sir David? <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Did you have to bring all those animals with you? I'm afraid they're rather attached to me. <laughs> right, welcome to our monthly round table meeting. I've split you into three groups. On the right, you're the ones in shining armor. In the middle, you're the Jedi. And the ones on the left, you're the ones in white satin. Any questions? <laughs> no? Right. Go and, uh, go and get changed. Oh, Sir Philip. Sir Philip Green. Yes, sir. You stay behind. I'm putting you in charge of our pension plan. <laughs> The something night. No. Election night special. <laughs> uh, the night... <laughs> ...manager. <laughs> your turn now, uh, Barry and Jeremy. Your, your title's now being exhibited on the laser display board, and here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Rear window. Rear window. Okay. Right. Film two words. Yeah. Film. Hamish. Ah. Hey. Ah, your lordship. Uh, you'll have had your tea. <laughs> well, I've just enjoyed a mouthful of Earl Grey. Oh, well. <laughs> well, well, to each his own. Um... <laughs> Wait a minute, what? What's this? Turn around. Oh, no. Last time I did that, you pinched my clutchy dumplings. <laughs> What's this? You appear to have installed a sheet of glass in the back of your kilt. Oh, it's, it's all the rage. <laughs> it's a very popular look. You ask Peeping Tam. <laughs> you might have hung some net curtains. That's the very latest fashion. You know what they call it. A pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> very witty, but no, sir. It's known as a... Dot, dot, dot. Doing place up. Um, curtain. Mm. Uh, window. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Well, the next round involves expert advice, and despite the many wonders of the modern age, driverless cars, contactless payments, and paperless lavatories, <laughs> Many people turn to self-help books for advice. In this round, I'll supply the answers to a number of everyday problems posed by readers, and the team's task is to guess what the original questions might have been. All right, so uh, you can start, please, Jeremy. So here's the answer. I want to know what the question is. It'll charge much faster. Why shouldn't you ask a rhino what it thinks about Chinese medicine? <laughs> Actually, the, uh, the question was, what happens if I use an iPad charger to charge my iPhone? So, Tim, here's... here's, here's I don't know why you're laughing. There's nothing... <laughs> I'm getting nothing from that. Nothing at all. Um, Tim, here's, here's the answer. By the first round. What was the question? What's the worst thing to do in rehab? <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is, how can I avoid spending loads on a night out? Barry, um, start multiplying random numbers in your head. As a banker, how would I calculate my annual bonus? <laughs> uh, that, very good. But in fact, the, um, the question was, what can I do if I'm finding it difficult to pee due to shyness? I just sit here and let it go. So I see. <laughs> I thought it was a way of preventing premature. Oh, no. <laughs> Rory, this is the, uh, the, the answer. Stretch a rubber band around one knob, then the other. What was the, <laughs> what was the question? How do I get Boris Johnson and David Cameron back together? <laughs> In, in fact, the question had been, how can I stop my door from latching? Back to you, Jeremy. Start at the bottom. Uh, on which cheek should you kiss a BBC executive? <laughs> in fact, the question to that answer had been, how can I peel a banana without having to pick those little stringy bits off it? Huh? So, again, you. I don't know what you're... <laughs> 
there's, there's a something for everyone, isn't there? There's something... <laughs> Tim, another one for you. And the uh, answer is peeing in the shower. What was the question? What was the original title for Singing in the Rain? <laughs> In fact, the question had been, is there a good way to save 1,157 gallons of water a year? Oh, so I, suppose, I suppose that stops you flushing, doesn't it, rather than actually showering under your own urine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, we've all done that. Yeah, yeah. Barry, another one for you. So the answer is, keep it hanging in the bathroom as you shower. What was the question? How would you expose yourself to a bat? <laughs> In fact, in fact, it was, how can I have a crease-free shirt without ironing it? And uh, finally, Rory, the answer is, tossing on some sage. <laughs> <laughs> what got me barred from the garden centre? <laughs> In fact, the question was, uh, what will improve the smell of my campfire while also keeping me insect-free? <laughs> so now you know. Okay, well here, here is some for any of you to have a go at. Um, so the answer is, remove your trousers and sit on it. <laughs> How would you expose yourself to a bat? <laughs> Part two. In fact, the question had been, how would gardeners of old recommend you check the warmth of the soil before sowing your seeds? <laughs> I can tell you that does not stand up in court. <laughs> Another one here. The answer is a mixture of urine, leftover wine and water. What was the question? What becomes of the broken hearted? <laughs> It was, uh, what can I give to my plum tree to accelerate its growth? Oh, <laughs> and, and the next answer is this. Hollow out a baguette and stick it in. Uh, ha how do you smuggle a courgette out of a boulangerie? <laughs> That's, very, That's very good. Uh, in fact, with, yeah, it had been, what's a good way to smuggle a bottle of my favourite drink into a festival or outdoor event? Oh. Yeah. Here's another one. The, uh, the answer is static for a whole day. What was the question? What's better than Radio 1? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, it had been, is there anything I can display on my plasma TV screen that will remove an image which has become burnt into the screen? All right, here's the answer. A plant, mister. What's the question? What's that growing in that pot, Sonny? <laughs> It's actually the uh, question of being, what would I use to ensure my plant seeds settle into the compost? Um, and the next answer is this. It reduces shrinkage by up to 50%. What's the advantage of a heated swimming pool? <laughs> actually, the, the question is, what is the point of running my bacon under cold water before cooking it? That was what it was. What? Oh. Uh, and finally, the answer is a chapstick. Uh, what's a chap's favourite thing to play with? <laughs> so the, uh, the question actually had been, what can I use to stop the pain of a paper cut? A little rub from a chapstick on the affected area will do the trick. If you can find a chap who's willing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's... it's... <laughs> All right, it's music time again with Swanee Kazoo. This is where the team's duet to combine the angel sigh of the Swanee whistle with the angle grinder rasp of the kazoo. And these two instruments famously combined on the 1984 album Music to Wear Earplugs To, um, <laughs> released by Guantanamo Bay Records. At the, um, at the piano, we have Colin Sell. Listeners may be interested to learn Colin has a Beatles connection, as in 1969, he had an Apple record published. His Apple record was eating 17 Cox's Pippins <laughs> in an hour. 
Uh, listeners tired of the traditional acoustic kazoo sound will be pleased to hear that this week I've taken delivery of our very first electric kazoos, which the teams will be getting to grips with for the first time today. All right, so, yeah, very exciting moment. Barry and Jeremy, you can start, and I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of Telstar by the Tornadoes to feature Barry Cryer on the electric kazoo and Jeremy Hardy on the Swanee Whistle. got to be bloody joking. <laughs> All right, so it's, uh, it's now uh, Rory and Tim's turn. Uh, before, before you do yours, I have to, a little bit of administration here. We spent so much on the electric kazoos, we've only got one of these DI boxes, so I have to now, um, so that Rory can play, I have to unplug Barry, which is... <laughs> It's a mercy, really. Yes. <laughs> it's what he would have wanted. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Do not resuscitate. I yes. uh, wasn't going to. <laughs> Tim, um, Tim and Rory, I'd like you to provide us with a rendition of I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones to feature Rory Bremner on the electric kazoo and Tim Brooke Taylor on the Swanee Whistle. nearly the end of the show. But there is just time in honour of Wimbledon fortnight to fit in a round of Tennis Film Club. And Samantha tells us she had an illustrious tennis career and has fond memories of her Wimbledon playing days, sweatily changing ends with Martina Navratilova before being seeded by Boris Becker <laughs> and uh, pulling off a powerful two-hander in the mixed doubles. <laughs> Happy days. Well, teams, I, I'd like you to suggest film titles likely to be popular with an audience of tennis fans. So you can stop these, Rory. From Russia with drugs. <laughs> Barry. Hello, volley. <laughs> Tim. Yvonne Goulagon with the wind. <laughs> Jeremy. Bjorn Borg on the 4th of July. <laughs> Who's afraid of Virginia Wade? <laughs> Uh, the seven-year Djokovic. <laughs> How clean was my volley? <laughs> LTA Confidential. <laughs> that was with Kim Slazenger. <laughs> the guns of Navratilova. <laughs> <laughs> Who the... framed Roger Federer? <laughs> the umpire strikes back. <laughs> Bring me the head tennis racket of Alfredo Garcia. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the pool attendant of time holds aloft the fishing net of fate, 
while the hot tub of hope has been cleared by the toddler's turd of eternity. <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha and myself, and our audience here in Liverpool, it's goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Barry Cryer, Jeremy Hardy, Tim Brooke Taylor, and Rory Bremner have been given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele, and the producer was John Naismith. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us this week at the Pavilion Theatre in the fine city of Glasgow. In the 1950s, central Glasgow became notorious for its street crime. The most prolific pickpocket, wee Jimmy Johnson, was eventually caught red-handed by a constable McVie, who dragged Johnson the length of Sockyhull Street, past Buchanan Street, along DL Street, down Buclue Street all the time, beating him about the head with his truncheon, and into Rose Street, where he took out his pocketbook and charged him. Asked in court why he'd done that, Constable McVie explained that he knew how to spell Rose Street. <laughs> The illusionist Henry McIlvenny worked the variety halls and bars of Glasgow in the 1950s. McIlvenny also discovered the secret to becoming invisible when he passed the hat round in a Parkhead pub. <laughs> The ancestors of the movie star John Barrymore emigrated to America from here in the 1850s and his granddaughter Drew Barrymore recently visited to unveil a plaque on the old family home. Now in her 40s, she still keeps her supermodel figure which she puts down to diet coke and exercise with a comma between diet and coke. <laughs> When earlier this year it was discovered that carbon emissions from Glasgow and its surrounding towns will eventually put much of northern England under flood water, the Scottish Environment Agency immediately sprang into not giving a toss. <laughs> Glaswegians were recently excited by rumours of a new theme park opening here, but it turns out Disneyland Glasgow refers to a Scottish budget airline. <laughs> Glasgow's Prestwick Airport is famous as it was visited by Elvis Presley in 1960 when he made a short stopover on his way back from serving in the army in Germany. Elvis never came back to Britain again and passed away in 1977 in the toilet. But he's not the last visitor here to have died on his arse. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Fred McCauley. On my right, Tony Hawks and Susan Coleman. And taking her place at the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the ever fragrant Samantha. Well, we start this week with a look at the world of literature. A visit to a bookshop is one of life's great pleasures, although it can be confusing. Earlier today in Glasgow Waterstones, Samantha tells us she asked for Fanny Burney and was directed to the medical section. <laughs> In this round, I'll ask the teams to suggest book titles that would have been substantially different if just one letter was mistakenly added to the title. Uh, Barry, you can start. Fifty Shades of Gravy. <laughs> Susan. Angels with Dirty Feces. <laughs> Fred. Hi, Claudius. <laughs> Tony. 
Angela's rashes. <laughs> Fleming's Dr. Knob. <laughs> the Hunt for Fred October. <laughs> Five Go Clamping. <laughs> Wart and Peace. <laughs> Little Fred Riding Hood. <laughs> I think you know what I'm up to. <laughs> Fart from the Madding Crowd. <laughs> Finnegan's awake. <laughs> Don't Quixote. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stoned. <laughs> Tarka the Rotter. Moby's Dick. <laughs> Me, Ian Camp. The man with the golden gunk. <laughs> well, it's uh, time now for a musical round as I ask the teams to play one song to the tune of another. <laughs> now, this shouldn't be confused with Andrew Lloyd Webber's greatest hits, one song to the tune of Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto. <laughs> At the piano, we have Colin Sell. And, uh, Scottish listeners may be interested to learn that Colin was the man behind Wet Wet Wet, still Radio Clyde's most accurate three-day weather forecast. <laughs> so we'll um, start with you, Barry. I would like you to sing the words of Run Rabbit Run to the tune of the theme from Swan Lake. Every Friday on the farm, it's rabbit pie day. So every Friday that ever comes along, I get up early and sing this song. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, 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 rabbit, run, rabbit, run, 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 bang, 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 bang. bang. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, 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 rabbit, run, rabbit, run, 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 don't give the farmer his fun, 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 he'll get by without his rabbit pie, so run, rabbit, run, run, run. Thank you, Barry. Well, it's you now, Susan. I'd like you to sing the words of I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor to the tune of I Belong to Glasgow. <laughs> Susan, well, your turn, Fred. I'd like you to sing the words of There's No One Quite Like Grandma to the tune of Scotland the Brave. <laughs> There's no one quite like Grandma, and I know you will agree that she always is a friend to you and a friend to me. There's no one quite like Grandma, she's there in times of need. For his bedtime on her knee to us, a book she'll read. Grandma, we love you. Grandma, we do. Though you may be far away, we think of you. And one day when we are older, we'll look back and say there's no one quite like Grandma. She's helped us on our way. Clap, clap, clap. 
Hawley. You even clap along aggressively, don't you? <laughs> Finally, Tony, I would like you to sing the words of Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood to the tune of There's a Kind of Hush by the Carpenters. <laughs> Relax, don't do it when you want to go to it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. When you want to come. Relax, don't do it when you want to go to it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. Relax, don't do it when you want to suck to it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come but Shoot it in the right direction, maybe making it your intention, oh yeah. But to hit me, hit me, oh hit me with those laser beams I'm coming. I'm coming, yeah, relax, don't do it when you want to come. Well, the next game is called Word for Word, and it's all about words. Uh, in the modern era, it's virtually impossible to misspell words. This is due to the pioneering work of the German etymologist Otto Correct. <laughs> In this game, each team attempts to exchange unrelated words while the opposing team tries to spot a connection. Susan and Tony, you can start exchanging your words while Barry and Fred, you should challenge to take over play if you think you've spotted a connection. So off you go, Susan and Tony. Phlegm. Malfeasance. Hexagonal. Manky. <laughs> Sloth. Crisps. Puppet. Spiral. Glove. If that got Barry. Sorry. Spiral. <laughs> spiral glove. Sixes rock group. <laughs> you must remember them. What was, uh, what was the name of their album? <laughs> Fit like a glove. <laughs> Do you remember how it went, Barry? Yes. Go on then. <laughs> Fit. Fit like a glove. You fit me, darling. You fit me like a glove. My heart is breaking. Very good. Jack. Thank, thank you, Dan. Did, you, did you know that fit like a glove is actually a question in Aberdeenshire? <laughs> uh, now I'm not sure what you're getting at. <laughs> So, yes, correct. Yeah, okay, that's a, a, I'll accept that challenge. Um, Spiral Glove, the 60s rock group. So, over to you, Barry and Fred, to carry on. Abacus. Treeline. Belligerent. Tugboat. <sighs> Susan. I saw a tugboat that was looking quite belligerent the other day. Uh, it wasn't doing what it was meant to, so I believe a tugboat as a personification of a boat can be belligerent. Thank you. Can be. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, how, how, how could you tell the tugboat wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing, was it? Because uh, the uh, sailor, if that's the right term, <laughs> was looking quite annoyed and shouting, The other way! The other way! Well, She's actually right. I, I saw that as well. It, it, it was pushing. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. It's nice to see someone playing the game with honesty. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah. Is it? Um, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll accept that, I'll accept that, so uh, I, over to you, Susan and Tony. Velvet. Carnage. <laughs> you got their album as well, have you? Yeah. It wasn't me. It was Fred, actually. It was Fred. <laughs> it's, uh, Fred. It's a nightclub on the Fulham Road. <laughs> Velvet Carnage. Uh, and what, what sort of nightclub is it, is it? It's one of these places where women will, will dance uh, in front of you uh, semi-naked for 20, or however much it costs. <laughs> <laughs> no idea, but I've, I've heard about the it. The thing is, to be fair, that can happen in Buchanan Street yeah. bus station as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was going to say pounds, not pens. <laughs> So, Velvet Carnage, you say, the, yes, uh, yeah. the place where you go for a belligerent tugboat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I accept your challenge, Fred and Barry. Diagram. Stairwell. That's a, a Tony, straight in there. Well, you can't have a stairwell, uh, build it, without a diagram of it to start with. I mean, they go together like glove and uh, velvet. Yeah. <laughs> If you walk down the stairs to the dressing rooms in this building, mm. they, they were never on a diagram. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Right, we'll do one that's well, nine inches, then one at six <laughs> inches, another one at ten inches. Yeah. It's, it, it's all right if you're sober, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give that to you, Tony and Susan, yes? That's uh, over to you two. Oh, but there goes the goal, which tells us it's the end of the game, so we won't know what you were going to come up with next, Tony and Susan, nor will we know who won. <laughs> So, on to the next round, which celebrates all things Scottish. Uh, Greenock gave the world James Watt and his steam engine. Alloway gave the world Robert Burns and his poetry. And Glasgow gave the world the secure online money transfer system, PayPal Pal. <laughs> the teams, I have before me a selection of unfinished Scottish quotes from various sources, and your job is to complete them. All right, so uh, maybe we'll start with you, Fred. Here are some words of Nicola Sturgeon. I've never had a voice coach, but I am about to name drop horrendously here. I did once get some advice on how to project my voice from Sean Connery. He said, it's all about where you shit. <laughs> in, the, in the chamber. Uh, it's all about where you shit in the chamber. <laughs> He said it's all about where you breathe. Um, Susan, view this is uh, James the Sixth of Scotland and James the First of England on smoking. It is a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the black, stinking fume thereof, nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit that is Muirfield Golf Course. <laughs> It's a, the bit that is bottomless, in fact, is what he said. Uh, Barry, some words for you from Rod Stewart. Uh, if there's one thing I've learned about women, which I try to pass on to my boys, it's... They don't like being passed on to my boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, listening. Listen to the other side of the story first. Uh, finally, Tony, some words from a commercial for Baxter's Soup. You'd have to go to extreme lengths to find a better cock. Mr. Hawks. <laughs> it's, uh, it's extreme lengths to find a better cock a leaky soup. <laughs> OK, well, here are some for any of you to have a go at. Uh, from Macbeth, this. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Well, that'll be Friday, then. <laughs> It uh, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. Uh, Rod Stewart again. My shows are like having a climax. It's like having an incredible natural climax. And then suddenly it's... <laughs> then suddenly it's all finished and you don't know what to do next. <laughs> Gordon Brown. They should never have put me with that woman. She was just a sort of bigoted woman who happens to live in a palace. <laughs> uh, she, she, said, uh, she was just a sort of bigoted woman who said she used to be Labour. Um, Dundee, one city, many... Clinics. <laughs> many discoveries. <laughs> Miss Hooley from Balamori. So, what's the story in Balamori? Well, today in Balamori, it's a sunny day, and everyone here is... Topless! <laughs> He's busy going to work and school. Here's uh, Sean Connery. Perhaps I'm not a good actor, but I would be even worse at... Shish tum salawa shish. <laughs> uh, 
uh, doing anything else. Some words of Jim Taggart. There's been a... Sail at Lidl. I got a canoe. <laughs> There's been a murder. Uh, and uh, finally, it's McVitie's penguin. P -p -p Pick up a P -p 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 prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> You'll better behave when Graham's here. I don't know. <laughs> Answer that was penguin. Uh, this next round is a musical one and entitled Karaoke Koki. Scotland has produced many great singers, including, of course, Rod Stewart, who was born in the Bonnie Glens of North London. <laughs> Interestingly, Rod's life story is soon to be made into a film, Brave Hertfordshire. <laughs> OK, uh, for this game, teams, our audience here in Glasgow have each been issued with a kazoo. And Colin will provide the introduction to a song which the audience will then play on their kazoos. You should buzz in, teams, if you think you can identify the song that they are playing, but if your guess is wrong, the audience must pick up again from where they left off. So, so uh, are you ready for this audience? Just, 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 just to let you know, that was quite aggressive. <laughs> I know you don't know you're doing it, but <laughs> the title of your first song will now be relayed to you via the laser display screen. And for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Flower of Scotland. Flower of Scotland. So, uh, if you're ready, off you go, please, Colin. Susan. That was amazing. <laughs> and I think that was the most glorious rendition of Flower of Scotland. <laughs> oh, Flower of Scotland. OK, well, then, very well done. It was indeed Flower of Scotland. You're in mm. very good voice tonight, uh, Glasgow. It's, uh, maybe it's, I've never heard people swearing into a kazoo like that. <laughs> Let's, let's try another one. Here's a, a further song uh, title for you, the audience. Ready, teams? Uh, and... Donald, where's your trousers? Donald, where's your trousers? So, once again, Colin will give the uh, introduction, and then you should pick up from where he... Thank you, Colin. Fred. Clearly there's something wrong with the digital display. <laughs> that, once again, is uh, Flower of Scotland. It wasn't Flower of Scotland. I think uh, you came in... In fairness, uh, I think there's uh, rather too many of you playing, and you, you, you made the bold decision to, to play it in the round, which didn't help. <laughs> so... Uh, I think we should just... We'll cut it down in numbers a little bit now. Um, we're just, just those of you in the upper circle. Upper circle, please. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Susan. Is it Taylor Swift Shake It Off? <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, the, the air is very thin up there, in fairness. <laughs> quite, quite difficult. Let's reduce it. For, I think we need fewer people playing for us to hear it more clearly. Um, let's just say, um, just moderate drinkers only. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> OK, just... <laughs> yes, Tony. Was that all by myself? <laughs> Sister Mary giving us a lovely rendition. <laughs> and she doesn't even have a kazoo. <laughs> let's let's not go there. Fred. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We've had the uh, upper circle. Now it's time just the stalls. Just the stalls. Hey, come on, people. Yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Good 
Mahoney. Donald, where's my trousers? Just, just see up in the upper circle that that must be pretty hard to take. <laughs> More money and more talent. <laughs> Life can be like that. <laughs> well, it is very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time, just time to fit in a quick round of Scott's songbook. Uh, Samantha informs me she's a fan of all things Caledonian and has only recently returned from a Scottish walking holiday. In just a week, she managed to bag three Munros, two McDoodles, and the <laughs> delighted McTavish. Um, teams, I'd like you to suggest song titles likely to be popular with an audience of Scots. So, Fred, you could start, please. Living next door to Alec. <laughs> uh, Tony. Can you feel the fourth? <laughs> Susan. Like a sturgeon. Barry, fly me to Danoon. Hold me closer, ya wee dancer. <laughs> I just called to say, I love you. You've lost that govern feeling. <laughs> I've got another Elton John one. Pure rocket man. Well, one by the, the Stranglers, Gordon Brown. Uh, we all live near a Trident submarine. If I had a hammer, I'd toss it in the morning. Sunday Bloody Herald. <laughs> Jumbalai, aye, 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 aye. aye. <laughs> Shiny happy peebles. Cabers. Everybody needs good cabers. Pishing on a star. Is you is or is you ain't from Paisley? I'm a booby girl. Walk like a Glaswegian. Hit me, baby, one more time and I'll break your <laughs> jaw. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as the vicious wind of time whistles up the real Scotsman's kilt of eternity <laughs> and the scrotal sack of serenity puckers beneath the sporran of existence, I see it's the end of the show. So from the teams, Samantha and myself, and our audience here in Glasgow, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Pryor, Tony Hawkes, Susan Kalman and Fred McCauley were being given silly things to do by Jack D, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele. And the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't a clue. The antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us on a second visit to Glasgow's Pavilion Theatre. The rich history of Glasgow goes back 1,400 years, or 1,400 years and six days, if you're listening to the repeat. <laughs> In the late 18th century, Glasgow became known as Europe's largest tobacco importer. William Cunningham opened his first factory in 1777, and the family-run business survived until 1993, making traditional full-strength cigarettes. When the last of the family line died recently, as a mark of respect, his ashes were trodden into the pavement outside of Far Exit. 
Opened in 1872, Glasgow Corporation Tramways became one of the largest urban tramway systems in the world. Until 1903, the trams were hauled by horses. Uh, when the generating station was built at Port Dundas, the service was adapted to electric power and journey times tumbled. At first, it was debated whether to use alternating or direct current, but after experimenting, it was discovered that by connecting them to alternating current, the horses ran much faster. <laughs> Following urban reconstruction in the 1960s, certain areas of Glasgow have gained a reputation for crime and violence. However, a recent TV documentary found very little evidence when a BBC reporter went undercover in Maryhill, working as a tail gunner on a milk float. <laughs> We are today guests of the Pavilion Theatre, which has staged many fine productions, including a recent production of Shakespeare's tragedy, The Scottish Play. I have to say Scottish Play because it's believed that if you say the word Macbeth in a theatre, something awful will happen. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. They are on my left, Barry Cryer and Fred McCauley. And on my right, Tony Hawks and Susan Kalman. And taking her place at the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the ever-wonderful Samantha. <laughs> we, uh, we start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good dictionary is essential for learning the correct use of similar terms. For example, many people don't understand the subtle difference between the words revolution and coup. Well, a revolution is the forcible overthrow of a government in favour of a new social order, whereas a coup is something a Scotsman milks. <laughs> But the meanings of words are constantly changing, teams. So your suggestions, please, of any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Uh, Tony, you can start. Asphalt. Reason for bringing a court case against an ageing celebrity. <laughs> Susan. Loathing. An object on the bottom shelf. <laughs> Barry. Testosterone. Tessa of Durbervilles did a pancake by herself. <laughs> Testosterone. Lambasted. Uh, an illegitimate young sheep. <laughs> Occupants. Underwear for squatters. <laughs> Philistine. What a German barmaid does. <laughs> collusion? A well-planned collision? <laughs> Massachusetts? A large collection of dentures. <laughs> Fastidious? The three old presenters of Top Gear. <laughs> Perth, where Chris Eubank keeps his cash. <laughs> Mendicant, a govern repair man. <laughs> Shavings, what Sean Connery keeps in his bank account. <laughs> Tracheectomy, the surgical removal of a shell suit. <laughs> Suggestive, a salacious biscuit. <laughs> Suppository, someone you've always suspected votes Conservative. <laughs> well, the uh, teams are now going to sing along with some well-known oh. discs in the game called Pick Up Song. These days, rare vinyl commands a fortunate auction. The Holy Grail for collectors is the debut single by the legendary singer and robe map feature, Engelbert Humpback Bridge. 
Samantha will spin the discs and each of you should sing along to your records teams until Samantha turns the volume down. If on its return you're within a gnat's crotchet of the original, I'll be awarding points. And points mean a frankly damning indictment of the complete lack of imagination at the very core of British society. <laughs> what do points mean? This week's prize is the perfect alcoholic takeaway for the busy Scottish spy novelist. Is this John Le Carre out? <laughs> Fred, you're to uh, start, and I'd like you to accompany Kenneth McCalla singing Roman in the Gloaming. Roman in the Gloaming on the bonny banks so of Roman in the gloaming with my lassie by my side When the sun has gone to rest That's the time that we love best Oh, it's lovely Roman in the gloaming I've seen lots of bonny lassies Travelling far and wide But my heart is centred new On bonny Kate McBride And although I'm no a chap that throws a word away I'm surprised myself sometimes at all I've got to say Roman in the gloaming on the bonny bank so fly Roman in the gloaming lay a lassie by my side Very good, Fred. I think it's spoiled only by the noise in the background of the audience here trying to jemmy open the vending machine at the back of the <laughs> OK. <laughs> you're, you're next, Barry. I'd like you to accompany Tony Christie singing Is This the Way to Amarillo? <laughs> The day is dawning on a Texas Sunday morning. How I long to be there with Marie, who's waiting for me there. Every lonely city where I hang my hat ain't as half as pretty as where my baby's at. Is it a way to Amarillo? Every night I've been hugging my pillow, dreaming dreams dream, dream, of Amarillo. Oh, oh wonderful! Uh, you, you now, Tony, and uh, would you accompany the Gypsy Kings singing Bambaleo? <laughs> Así de esta manera, vos tenés la culpa. Caballero de la sabana, porque es muy depresado, por eso no te perdona ahora. Y llamo, llega así de esta manera, no tenés la culpa. Amor de compraventa, amor de el pesado. Ven, vele, ven, vele, ven, vele, ven, ven, vele, ven. Bamboleo, bamboleo, porque mi vida yo la prueba de ver así. Bamboleo, bamboleo. Oh, Tony, Tony wants to. Uh... I must say, you give the lyrics a new poignancy. <laughs> Susan, Susan Kalman, uh, please accompany Celine Dion, or uh, singing all by myself. Fun. Those days are gone. Living alone. I think of all the friends I've known and When I dial the telephone Nobody's home Oh, bye
was wonderful. Be honest, that's not the first time you've sung that, is it? <laughs> well, it's time for some acting now in the miming round called Sound Charades. And uh, this is a variation on the old TV favourite, Give Us a Clue, the show that featured mime master general Lionel Blair. Interestingly, Blair is a Scots surname, and Lionel can trace his family tree back to the 1700s, where the Blairs were renowned for their prowess at indigenous sports, particularly the Caber. Not for nothing were the Blairs known as the biggest tossers in the Highlands. <laughs> Tony and Susan, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. The comfort of strangers. The comfort of strangers. Okay, this is a book and a film. Four words. Um, excuse me. Yes? I I've never met either of you before, but I'm about to do the weekly wash and I find myself completely out of fabric condition. <laughs> Well, how simply dreadful. Um, try this. Uh, we find it keeps our laundry soft and fresh, even at low temperatures. <laughs> Don't we, dear? Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> oh, and remember, other brands are available. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. oh, gosh, I'm just doing a wee list of all the fabric conditioners that I know. <laughs> the Comfort. It's the comfort of strangers. Yes. So, your turn, Barry and Fred, and your title is now being exhibited on the laser display board. Here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. It's a TV and a film, and it's two words. My new girlfriend's a singer, and she's incredibly rich. Really? What's her name? Cher. Cher? She's so rich, she owns 20 houses all over the world. <laughs> Trouble is, whenever she moves from one home to another, she leaves the last one wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Invitation to burglars. Exactly. I have to keep reminding her to turn the key in the lock when she leaves. In fact, I'm texting her now. Look. Ah, right. Brief. <laughs> brief and to the point. I think so. Um, I think I know what it is. Oh. I believe it is Sherlock Holmes. Oh. It's now time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. First, I notice our intray has been avalanched by a letter. It comes from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. Yay! Mrs. Trellis writes, Dear Melvin Bragg, <laughs> do it in your own time. Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. <laughs> in deference to our generous hosts here north of the border, we're going to play the celebrated Scots version of the game, Morning Side Crescent. <laughs> Now, the rules of Morningside Crescent were originally revised by the infamous Lord Govan, and in the words of the great man, players will be scunnered if they bide a wa doon the diagonal, if only either a player tacks the southerly approach fay a previous position, and he who gangs agli the line of play will be rendered numpteed. OK, so very much as you'd expect, and we'll play the Glasgow variation. So inversions are, of course, permissible, but must be sequential and non-linear. Okay. Oh. So, wow. Tony, you can start. Jeez. Um, George Street. George Street. George. Oh, it's got to be non-linear. Non yeah. Gallowgate. Mm. OK. Yes, yeah. and Fred? Um, Squinty Bridge. <laughs> oh God. Squ was, um, sorry, what was that again? <laughs> Squinty Bridge. Squinty Bridge. Yeah, that is yeah. that is non-linear. You're right, it's non-linear. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to go uh, Clay Slaps Road. What? Clay, <laughs> Clay Slaps That's Road. An it's an inversion, oh. isn't no, it? No, uh, it's not an inversion. Well, you left me sorry. Oh, I think you've left me numpted. No. Uh, so it's over to you, Tony, yeah. you, you big Sassanac. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, that's giving me a lift. Um, I can do Edinburgh Castle. Mm, Edinburgh Castle, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Nice yes. biggie. Yeah. Princess Street. Yeah, Princess Street. Frederick yeah. Street. Wait a oh. minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just finishing off with Princess Street. Thank you, Barry. Just a bit worried about Barry because he's looking a bit peely welly. <laughs> To push him too fast. So sorry. Uh, yes, Fred, you big bampot. What, <laughs> what was what was your one, Fred? I, I left right in with Frederick Street. Yes, Frederick Street. That's a permissible. Yep. That's uh, taking you out on the diagonal again. Pollockshaw's Road. Whoa! Heat the ball. Listen, you've just got to. <laughs> you've just got to be bold. Um, but it opens the door for me to give you... Oh, it does? Well, yeah, it does. I can give it you... It does? Yeah. Well, Holyrood. Ooh. <laughs> oh, boy. The guy's going for it. This is extraordinary. Uh, Holyrood. Um, well, James. Right back. I'm blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blocked here. Cadogan Street? That's sequential. That is sequential. That is sequential yeah, and linear. Buzz, buzz. Don't remember you being oh, made the judge of this. <laughs> <laughs> Furhill. Furhill. <laughs> Babberton Main Drive. <laughs> it's um, there, Tony. It's that there. People pleaser, you. It's there. It's Tony, isn't it? It's Tony. I think I'll give it away. Lothian Road. Morningside Crescent. <laughs> Morning, side present. Well, Mickey, me, that was minging. <laughs> yes, I think I've uh, picked up the accent very nicely. Uh, okay, the next round is called Complete Marriage. Uh, under Scottish civil law, married couples stand together as complete equals, while under Muirfield golfing law, the, uh, the woman stands in the car park with a bag of crisps. <laughs> In this round, I'll supply you teams with a selection of unfinished quotes and sayings on the subject of marriage, and your job is to finish them off. Okay, so Barry, some words of Frank Carson for you. I don't think my wife likes me very much. When I had a heart attack, she wrote for an ambulance. <laughs> well, that is the answer. In fairness, you probably wrote the gag, so... <laughs> Fred, this is uh, the words of Alan J. Lerner. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are going to chime. Pull out the stopper, let's... Let's think this through. She, ha <laughs> she has a stopper. <laughs> Pull out the stopper, let's have a whopper, but get me to the church on time. Susan? This is uh, some words of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Men marry women with the hope they will never change. Women marry men with the hope they will change. Invariably... It's just a waiting game until one of them dies. <laughs> <laughs> Invariably, they are both disappointed. Uh, Tony, this is... Uh, Prince Philip said this. When a man opens a car door for his wife, it's either... Because the servant hasn't turned up, or the car's on fire and you need to get out her side. <laughs> uh, he said it's either a new car or a new wife. Um, back to you, Barry. That's a limerick. There was a young man from Elora who married a girl called Lenora. He played her at cricket. When she took his wicket, she got a thumbs up from the scorer. <laughs> He said, uh, he actually said uh, but he had not been wed very long till he said, Oh, drat, I've married a snorer. <laughs> uh, Fred! 
For you, here's uh, an English proverb. It's a good horse that never stumbles and a good wife that... Romps home at five to one. <laughs> a good wife that never grumbles. Um, Susan, some words of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think that gay marriage should be between... Susan Kalman and Gillian Anderson. <laughs> He said, I think, I think that gay marriage should be between a man and a woman. <laughs> uh, Tony, some words of Lionel Blair. I can't bear gay marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. The world has changed. What has happened to my beautiful wedding dress and that little diamante tiara? <laughs> oh, what's happened to my beautiful England? <laughs> uh, back to you, Barry. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. I got. Never mind that, sir. Just blow into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I got married to the widow next door. Uh, Fred. Here's a Scottish proverb: A hairy man's a geary man, but a hairy wife's a bonus. <laughs> It says, a hairy wife's a witch. Um, Susan, here's another. Yeah, this is an English proverb. It is better to marry a shrew than... A hamster. <laughs> better to marry a shrew than a sheep. Uh, <laughs> not that much better. <laughs> and uh, finally, Tony. This is from a personal ad from an Ohio newspaper, 1903. Young man, moderate circumstances, and who has glass eye, would like to form the acquaintance of young girl who also has a glass eye. Object? Marbles. <laughs> See, uh, object matrimony. Uh, well, here's some for any of you to have a go at. Um, Carol Vorderman, uh, my first marriage was totally unsuitable and shouldn't have happened. It was a whirlwind rebound thing. I was 23 or... 246 minus 16. <laughs> oh, 23 or 24. Scottish proverb now. Uh, choose your wife on Saturday and not on... eBay. <laughs> Uh, the answer is not on Sunday, e.g. Uh, choose her for her everyday usefulness, not for her Sunday appearance. Yeah. Yeah, well, don't have a go at me, it's Scottish. <laughs> um, and finally, some words of Princess Margaret. I would like it to be known that I have decided not to marry Group Captain Peter Townsend. Mindful of the Church's teaching that Christian marriage is indissoluble and conscious of my duty to the Commonwealth, I have resolved to... Shag around instead. <laughs> hurt you, Fred. Why did you tell me that? <laughs> I have resolved to put these considerations before any others. Well, it is very nearly the end of the show, but there is just time, there is just time to fit in a quick round of Beautician's Film Club. And Samantha loves being pampered. Only recently she paid a long-awaited return visit to her favourite international beauty spa for a weekend of facials. <laughs> She told us she felt quite emotional to be back enjoying massages with old friends, one Turkish, one Thai, before a rather brisk Brazilian brought tears to her eyes. <laughs> Teams, I'd like you to suggest film titles likely to be popular with an audience of beauticians. Can you please start this one, Susan? Back, sack and crack to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Barry. The mud pack of Notre Dame. <laughs> Fred. Vajaz will be the day. <laughs> Tony. Shaving Ryan's privates. <laughs> 28 days epilator. <laughs> Exfoliating Rita. <laughs> Murder on the L'Oreal Express. <laughs> Paint your sagging. <laughs> Pan 
Pantene's Labyrinth. The Man in the Iron Mascara. Mad Wax 2. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the deep-fried pizza slice of time is coated with the salt and sauce of serendipity and the pie supper of posterity narrows the aorta of eternity, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the teams, Samantha and myself and all our audience here in Glasgow, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Tony Hawks, Susan Palman and Fred McCauley were being given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't a clue. The antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello. Hello. And welcome to I'm sorry I haven't a clue. You join us this week on a visit to South End on Sea. Indisputably a town in Essex. <laughs> the county of Essex gets its name from the East Saxons, who were defeated in a battle to the north of here in 1016. The Saxons were mercilessly thrashed by the Danes on the orders of their king, Knut the Great, as he was described by the Saxon historian, Ethelston the Dyslexic. <laughs> The Essex Literary Society was founded in 1831 by Peter Mark Roger, who wrote the famous Thesaurus, which bears his name. At the time, he struggled to find a market for his book and constantly pestered the eminent publisher, Charles Branwell. After repeatedly rejecting it, Branwell finally told Roger to stick his thesaurus up his arse bum backside. <laughs> Southend is notable for having Britain's first branch of Starbucks outside of London, which opened in 1997. Before then, the people of Southend had to make their own coffee, shout out their name incorrectly, and then burn a £5 note. <laughs> The man who designed the Range Rover retired here and passed away recently. He was coming out of a supermarket when he collapsed across two parking spaces. <laughs> The late film director and restaurant critic Michael Winner had a country home near Great Baddow. And sadly, the house burnt down while he was away, despite a neighbour... <laughs> despite a neighbour summoning the fire brigade. So that was a waste of a second-class stamp. <laughs> Let's Let's meet the teams. On my left, Barry Cryer and Sandy Toxvig. And on my right, Miles Jupp and Richard Osman. And taking her place at the desk next to me, please welcome our scorer, the ever-wonderful Samantha. Well, we start this week with a game called Change a Letter, Ruin a Show. Single letter changes can alter ideas or concepts. For example, simply substituting the letter N for the letter M gave us the noodle bar for pensioners, wagonanas. <laughs> In this round, I'll ask the teams to suggest TV, radio and film titles that would have been substantially different if just one letter was mistakenly changed. So, uh, start with you please, Barry. Why do you think you are? <laughs> Miles. Grand's Anatomy. <laughs> Richard. Uh, Gove Hurts. <laughs> oh. Sandy. Cull the Midwife. 
Are you being perved? <laughs> Three men in a goat. <laughs> Top rear. <laughs> Geordie Hoare. Desert Island Desks. The National Pottery, live. <laughs> Noel's Horse Party. <laughs> that was the 90s for you. Buffy the Vampire Speyer. <laughs> Mr. Who. Kevin MacLeod's Gland Designs. <laughs> Waking the Deaf. Hash in the Attic. Chunderbirds. Well, the uh, next game is called Word for Word. Now, in this game, each team attempts to exchange unrelated words while the opposing team tries to spot a connection. So, Baron Sandy, you can start exchanging your words while Richard and Miles, you should challenge to take over play if you think you've spotted a connection. So, off you go, please. Barry and Sandy. Plinth. Abassinate. Asteroid. Bonquette. Doppelganger. Oh, that's good. Uh <sighs> I've got two bonquettes, identical. <laughs> uh, fair enough. I think yeah. if you've uh, got yeah, two bonquettes, yeah, yes, I, I think we can... Uh, I, I, I will allow that. Yeah. I will allow that. That's a circle, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, off, off you go, Richard. Um, glow stick. Plumage. Apropos. Cheeks. Hovercraft. Brisket. Lyricism. Sandy. All these words are in a Greek dictionary, and they're trying to fool us by not doing them in Greek. Oh. <laughs> I, I think you have spotted a connection there, Sandy. <laughs> right, right. Um, and we are now into the elimination round, so it's over to uh, Sandy and Barry, where you will be eliminated if a connection is spotted. Furore. Oh. Uh, spritz. Gauntlet. Brazier. Ah, Miles. Well... I mean, if you suggest to someone that they might attempt to remove your brassiere, mm -hmm. as I've done several times, you are you're throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> throwing down the gauntlet. Okay. Well, I'm afraid, Sandy. Yes, uh, there, there is a there is a connection there, isn't there? there I'm very afraid, concrete I'm, one. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> concrete. <laughs> Un unarguable. Yeah. So, You've sorry. seen my bra. <laughs> Sandy uh, has now been eliminated, so it's now down to Barry to come up with a sequence of words. Um, to, to, to come up with a sequence of words which make no sense, um, which in Barry's case won't be a problem, I can assure you. On my own, this is. On your own, Barry, Solo. yes. Solo. Yes. Hubris, indigo, <laughs> Jesuit, kennel. Miles has uh, come in. We, we take our dog to a Jesuit kennel. <laughs> Could you give us more details of that? Yes, it's a retriever. <laughs> Fair enough, there are quite a lot of Jesuit kennels around, Barry. I'm yes, surprised uh, you didn't spot that. I don't so, get out enough. Yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that uh, so you're eliminated, Barry. So now it's down to Miles and Richard. <laughs> well, are we against each other? This is fun. Um, priest hole. Plunger. Well, that, Sandy has uh, challenged that, and I'm very grateful to Sandy because actually I am making up the rules as I go along <laughs> and realise that there was no one left to challenge. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy, what did you spot there? Well, I, depending on the state of the priest's hole, I would imagine that a plunger might occasionally be necessary. Plunge, it might be necessary the priest's hole. I don't yeah. know about Well, I don't know if we can... I uh, can't... Actually, maybe we should uh, put the vote to the people. That never goes wrong, does it? <laughs> wow. I think that... I think it's roughly 52-48%. <laughs> so now it's down to Richard to uh, come up with a sequence of words which have no connection. 
Okay. Uh, rocket. Chummy. Sandy again. I imagine if you're in a rocket with somebody, you've got to be quite chummy. <laughs> <laughs> they're small. They're a confined space. You don't, you don't get in a rocket, though, do you? You get in the capsule at the top of a rocket. Ooh, pedant. Oh. You, if you were an astronaut, you wouldn't be saying pedant. You would say, thank you very much for that information. <laughs> I thought you were using rocket as a verb and said, I imagine if you're going to rocket somebody, you'd oh. be quite chummy oh. with them. Oh. No, oh. I misheard it. Yeah. So I simply no, misheard I, it. But no, I think, Jack, that means you win. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy that. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK, well, we come now to the round called Celebrity in a Box. And the rules are self-explanatory. So let's meet today's celebrity. And we're honoured to welcome His Royal Highness, Prince William, Duke of Cambridge. <laughs> welcome, Your Royal Highness. I, now, I know you're a very busy man, so without further ado, can I ask you to step into the box? Thank you, and there we are, our celebrity in a box. Uh, on to the next round. Okay, the next round takes as its inspiration the world of games. Now, who here hasn't looked at a Monopoly box lid, read eight years plus, and thought, well, that's way too bloody long? <laughs> The idea is that one team will play a favourite game of theirs, after which the opposing team should attempt to guess the name of the game that they're playing. So, Barry and Sandy, you can start, and the title of your game will now be advertised to the audience via the laser display board. And for listeners, <laughs> for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Gludo. Gludo. Are you ready? Yes, Barry and Sandy. OK, uh, my turn to guess this time. Was it Professor Gum in the craft room with the epoxy resin? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Was it Colonel Yoohoo in the bicycle shed with the rubber cement? No, it wasn't him either. Then I'm stuck. <laughs> Good game, eh? Mmm, not to be sniffed at. <laughs> Could it possibly be Gludo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So your turn to play a game, Richard and Miles, and the title of your game is now <coughs> being exhibited on the laser display board while here again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Desperate for the Ludo. Desperate for the Ludo. Okay. Over to you, Richard and Miles. Oh, oh, how long have we been playing this? Two hours! Oh. <laughs> if, we can, yeah. if we can just get to right. the centre. Let's just get it for... Oh, oh six. Oh. That's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> your turn, come on. Okay, right. Just get your... I'm going to get there. I'm going to get your yellow thing oh. to the middle. Gosh, come on, you can do it. This always it's just a three. Know, That's all you need. It. Oh, 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 five. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh. I just needed two. I've got three of my red ones home. I just right. need... Four. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can you roll for me? Because I need both hands to hold the table. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't have that three bean salad before we started playing. Fourteen. Oh. <laughs> Come on, we just need to get you need like you've gone all the way around the whole oh, cross. Sick. You just need, come on, come on, go, for, go. Oh, finally! Oh, thank God. After you. <laughs> Faintly lavatorial context, yes. I yes. think, and uh, I think it's two syllables, and I'm trying to think of uh, the other one. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Shot in the dark. Lou. What can the second syllable be? Over to Sandy. Is it, is it Ludo? Oh, there's more. Well, the prefix to Ludo was... There's, oh, there's a prefix to Ludo. Well, oh! <laughs> can I say, people listening at home, Richard has been the one that's hit the button every time. <laughs> what, what, sorry, what do you mean, button? <laughs> The 
there's a prefix to it. It was, it's, uh, well, you can tell them. The game we were playing is called Desperate for the Ludo. <laughs> Desperate for the... Oh, yes. Uh, and it's, and it's brilliant. Much better. Yes. <laughs> I feel a fool now. I know. I'm trying to stifle my laughter. And I'm managing. <laughs> this is... Lovely team play. Lovely team play. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, in this next game, we take a look at eye-catching programme titles. A good programme title can help secure a huge audience, as was illustrated by the recent Channel 4 documentary about the favourite biscuits of the travelling community, My Big Fat Gypsy Creams. <laughs> Uh, the people whose job it is to come up with ideas for radio and TV shows can be remarkably lazy with their programme titles, so I'll ask the teams to share examples of programmes where the content has been contrived to suit what someone thought would make a clever title. Uh, maybe we start with you, please, Miles. Coming up on BBC Three, veteran comedian and ladies' man Barry Cryer hosts a brand new dating and makeover series specifically targeted at the over 80s. That's Snog Barry Avoid. At... <laughs> Barry, on ITV tonight, Beyonce shows us round the stately home she's just bought. That's Beyonce Castle tonight <laughs> on ITV. <laughs> Richard. Next on BBC One, what happens when a leading chemist opens two branches in the same Surrey town? In These Boots Are Made For Woking. <laughs> Sandy. Tonight, Rick Stein travels to France to examine why the British are so squeamish about some traditional French cooking. That's Rick Stein with Horses For Courses. <laughs> Coming up on BBC Four, we look at the intriguing case of how one of Britain's favourite comedians won planning permission to build his new house next to a cemetery. That's let bygraves be bygraves. <laughs> Later on BBC Four. And on Channel Four now, a documentary entirely made up of short bits of footage of cardiac surgery in totally clips of the heart. <laughs> the life scientific Jim Al-Khalili talks to Professor James Long about his groundbreaking work analysing personality traits from people's urine samples. That's taking the piss this Wednesday. <laughs> Tonight's concert on Radio 3 features a group of amateur musicians who are all serving police officers. The London Occasional Law Officers Light Orchestra. So tonight at 8, don't miss music from LO, LO, LO. <laughs> On E4 now, the dating show where IT professionals have to win a date and then immediately get dumped in Try Turning It On and Off Again. <laughs> Tune in for the new quiz with Alexander Armstrong and Richard Osmond and all the contestants go commando. That's pantless today at 5 <laughs> Well, this next game is called Just a Minim, and it's a musical version of the long-running wireless favourite, Just a Minute. And Just a Minute has run for over 900 episodes and is kept fresh with regular injections of new blood, as is its host, Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> So, Colin, I'm going to need you to... No, Col Colin. Colin! Colin! I haven't, I haven't, I haven't finished yet, have I? No. Nay. I was about to say, I'm going to need you to keep very quiet until I actually asked you to play the piano. And as... Oh, don't feel sorry for him. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have turned up in his gardening clothes. <laughs> and as the minute waltz gently fades away, please welcome our four gifted, uh, accomplished, skilled, and masterful, adept, ingenious players who are also lively, entertaining, quick witted, etc., etc. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sandy Toxvig. We're going to uh, go to you first. And the song I'd like you to sing with your usual wit and wisdom without hesitation, repetition, deviation, or repetition is Oh, I Do Like to Be Beside the Seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the seafront. Me prefer being next to briny deep. Sure am to stroll upon the prom path beach where the brass plants blatantly on pom teach. <laughs> so just let me exist along the ocean. I'll conduct life with such glee. And there's lots of girls as well, me. I'd love so joining a breast parallel to froth them, also the surf. <laughs> Sandy, thanks for uh, coming, coming very skillfully to the end of a song. Unfortunately, this, unfortunately, it's still 36 seconds to go. <laughs> <laughs> but Sandy, you show very, very well. You're very, well, marvelous, skillful player of the game that we love to play so much. And Sandy, who's played the game we love to play so much on, so, on several occasions now, and also always doing very, very, very well with it. And considering, <laughs> considering he's actually. Um, because she's a lady, and we always treat lady players on this show as if they are equal to men players. <laughs> Move on, we now uh, have a, a second song to sing, and, uh, and I'd like Richard to start this time with She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain, Richard Osman. be coming round the mountain when her comes traversing the hillock and Barry has a challenge there Barry just wait a minute I was until I haven't introduced yet haven't I Barry <laughs> haven't been able to be able to tell the ladies and gentlemen that you're a long long standing member of the game and <laughs> a skillful player of the game that we love to play and I'm so keen to come in with a challenge you haven't even let me say my bit and I'm the chair of the game <laughs> I don't say that, no one will know where we stand with it. Any Barry Cryer, who is so desperate to spit out what he wants to say, I don't, I'm hoping now that it's, it's going to be kind-hearted and not as vitriolic as it sometimes can be. <laughs> Dear Barry Cryer, who's been coming here for so many years, he's actually forgotten that he's no longer invited. <laughs> Barry Clive, what was the nature of your challenge? Hesitation. There was a bit of a hesitation there, wasn't there? Richard Osman came in, a bit of a hesitation there between the words. He, uh, he sounded as though he was uh, searching for the next. It's a fair, fair challenge, isn't it? I think, Richard, don't you agree? Richard, don't just sit there nodding. This is radio, don't you understand? <laughs> People can't see that now. I am strongly in favour of that challenge. Yes, well, Richard Osman there is a co-host of TV's favourite show, uh, Pointless, where they keep the, the, uh, the, the quality of the show so high by only making six shows a day. And that's how they do it. <laughs> There's a, a, a trade secret that he won't mind me letting you in on there. <laughs> so yes, there's a successful challenge from Barry there with only uh, 68 seconds left to go there. <laughs> and still be coming round the mountain to Barry Cryer. Thank you, Barry. Circling the hill on her arrival and orbiting similar territory, as well as visiting various routes in the area. And Sandy, a challenge there. Sandy, what was the nature of your challenge? I, I'm Sandy, been playing the game for many, many years. A skillful player of the game that we love to play. Not only, not only here, but throughout uh, Her Majesty's United Kingdom, which is mostly England now. But we, we, we carry on anyway, don't we? What was, what was the nature of your challenge, Sandy? I was just putting Barry out of his misery, that was all. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure that's a proper challenge, but the audience here in South End enjoyed it so much. As I'm, <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a, a seven and six coupon for to spend at Timothy White's or whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. It's back to you, Barry, I'm afraid. Oh, There's uh, another 72 seconds left. Of... She'll be coming round the mountain. Over to you, Barry. Singing, I owe you be happy. 
Caroline J K L O V. And uh, the whistle went there, which means that uh, and I just. Now that isn't the uh, end of the round whistle. That's the that's called the mercy whistle. That one isn't. <laughs> Just occasionally you had to blow it, just to help Barry out occasionally. But you did very, very well there, weren't you? A, 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 a seasoned player of the game, we love to play there, but they didn't quite get the end there. But we have sadly come to the end of our time with uh, just a minute, so don't forget to tune in next week. And we are indebted, uh, which is why we keep playing the game so much. Really. <laughs> well, now we have to, uh, we have to thank Ian Mess It Up who uh, has been uh, so marvellous. We don't really, but I have to say that anyway. So, uh, thank you for joining us on Just a Minim. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's very nearly the end of the show, uh, but there is just, you know, it's just time to fit in a quick round of Essex Songbook. Um, uh, Samantha tells me she's a huge fan of Southend and only recently spent an exhilarating afternoon here learning from a gentleman friend how to make candy floss in his seaside stall. How they laughed as she grabbed his wooden stick in her hand and watched as it grew bigger and bigger. <laughs> Imagine her surprise when it flew off before she'd finished. <laughs> leaving her with a very sticky sleeve. Uh, Sometimes I wish Jermaine Greer didn't write for this show anymore. <laughs> Teams, I'd like you to suggest song titles likely to be popular with people who live in Essex. Um, Sandy, you can start, please. Uh, don't let the sunbed go down on me. <laughs> Miles. I'm still Stansted. <laughs> Richard. Uh, by the rivers of Basildon. <laughs> Barry. And now South End is near. <laughs> hey, Mr. Tangerine Man. <laughs> Don't look back in anger. <laughs> I want to brain tree. <laughs> Nothing like a virgin. <laughs> The jazz will be the day. How much is that dogging in the window? <laughs> is this the way to Thurrock Services? <laughs> it's rain and men. Hallelujah, it's rain and men. Amazing greys. <laughs> Leon C. <laughs> when you're not strong. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as the tarnished tarmac of time is furtively fly-tipped by the cowboy builder of belligerence, while the mouldering mattress of mortality pisses off the persistent picnickers of penitence, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha and myself, and our audience here in South End, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Barry Pryor, Miles Jupp, Richard Osman and Sandy Topspig have been given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Jack D. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us for a second visit to South End on Sea in the in the fine county of Essex, and the artist John Constable famously painted cottages in North Essex, and Constable's great-great-grandson joined the Essex Police Force. As they didn't want to call him Constable Constable, he was uh, asked to change his name to something less confusing, and so became known as Constable Bent Bastard. <laughs> Ed
Aged 109, Britain's oldest man lives in a retirement home here. Interviewed recently, Reg Dean said his only regret is that he can no longer do the things that he loved to do when he was in his 20s, flying planes and bombing Germany. <laughs> Britain's previous oldest man died last New Year's Eve. He suffered a fit while playing charades and passed away surrounded by his family shouting, Is it dirty dancing? <laughs> the first Citizens Advice Bureau in Essex was opened in Canvey Island, where in their first year they gave only one piece of advice, move. <laughs> The inventor and wireless pioneer, Marconi, set up the world's first regular radio broadcasts from here. The company that bears his name later made televisions, as well as the first ever TV remote controls. These Italian-made controllers worked well, except if you were watching a war movie when they kept switching sides. <laughs> Marconi wasn't the last person here to make people switch over to a different channel. Let's meet the teams. We are on my left, Barry Cryer and Sandy Totsley. And on my right, Miles Jupp and Richard Osman. And the lovely lady who's been the team's right hand for many years, please welcome our scorer, the delightful Samantha. start this week with some new additions to the Uxbridge English Dictionary. A good dictionary is essential for learning the correct use of similar terms, uh, but certain regional words have been known to cause confusion. For example, a surprisingly large percentage of the UK population are unable to distinguish the difference between Ipswich and Norwich. Well, Ipswich is a large town in East Anglia whose history can be traced back to Roman times, whereas Norwich is a thing Chinese taxi drivers have to pass. <laughs> But the meanings of words are constantly changing, team, so your suggestions, please, of any new definitions you may have spotted recently. Uh, Richard, you can start. Uh, bigger mist. Heavy fog. <laughs> Sandy. Buttresses. Especially lustrous bottom hair. <laughs> Barry? Biddy Ford, a fiesta for an old lady. <laughs> Miles? Mirth, a French moth. <laughs> Conservatory, to pickle Boris Johnson. <laughs> Chinwags, Bruce Forsyth's wives and girlfriends. <laughs> Bicker, like a ballpoint, only more so. Potpourri, the aroma of dried Teletubby. <laughs> Likelihood, probably a gangster. <laughs> Barrier, more like Barry. <laughs> Referendum. That's the last time I ask you. <laughs> yeah. Juniper. Did you bite that woman? <laughs> Perspire. How a steeplejack charges. <laughs> Glamorgan. <laughs> The male version of the Vajazzle. <laughs> Windscreen, oh. underpants. <laughs> a shootout. Someone selling shoes at above their market value. <laughs> Well, 
it's time for some acting now in the miming round called Sound Charades. It's a variation of the old TV favourite. Give us a clue. A show that featured mime meister general Lionel Blair. Veteran entertainer Lionel keeps a typically sharp eye on current events. He took a particular interest in the recent referendum campaign, although ever shrewd Lionel refuses to be drawn on whether he was in or out. <laughs> Miles and Richard. Miles and Richard, you're to start, please, and your title will shortly be displayed to the audience via the laser display screen. And the mystery voice for listeners at home. Pointless celebrities. Pointless celebrities. Well, I'm two, two words. Two words. I'm yeah, going to It's a sort of mediocre television program. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, this is a lovely restaurant, Miles. It certainly is. Isn't it? <gasps> Don't look now. Guess who I've just seen? Literally just over your left shoulder. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's oh. Piers Morgan. <gasps> I suppose pe people like that would hang on a minute. Ooh. Behind you, yeah. eating pasta. One of Jedward. <laughs> Wait. Miles, drink up, we're leaving. It's Katie Hopkins. <laughs> it's sort of people you'd avoid. No, no, they're not here. Has it got like so many things the word celebrity in the title? <laughs> Ah. Celebrity Temple. I don't watch any of these things. Celebrity. Celebrity. Um, the, oh celebrity dear. dining. So celebrity. Di it's two words, wasn't it? Celebrity. Restaurants involved. Is the restaurant critical? I, am, I literally could not be more furious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there a, the thing you do? Do you do a celebrity one? <laughs> Please, please let him down gently, sir. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's that must see. <laughs> it's celebrity pointless. No pointless celebrity. Good, it's going to be an interesting meal after the show, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, final title is being displayed for you, Barry and Sandy, and here once again is the mystery voice for listeners at home. The Royal Hunt of the Sun. The Royal Hunt of the Sun. Okay. Six words, play in a film. Right, here it goes. Camilla! Who, who? It's like he was in the room. Oh, I know. Who's, who's been at my newspaper? Young Prince Harry, I bet. What do you mean, Charles? Somebody's pinched page three. <laughs> I, I, I can't find it anywhere. The end. <laughs> right, so, uh, Royal or Charles? Yeah. Okay, and something is missing. Yes. Uh, so I need to search for it. Um, is is there, is eighty soft porn in the title of it? Is that what <laughs> Not precisely. No. no, no. Royal Hunt for the Sun. Oh. It's uh, now time to play the <laughs> game called Mornington Crescent. First, I noticed that our doormat has been festooned by a letter. Uh, it comes from uh, Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. <laughs> Mrs. Trellis writes, Dear Shipping Forecast, I'm no prude, but why do doggers need to know which way the wind is blowing? <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. As we're, uh, as we're in South End, we will follow the standard Essex protocols, which uh, state that obliques are permissible, but only with the prior agreement of the chair, and players found to be outside the lateral may be placed in nip, but again, at the discretion of the chair. So, simple enough. Miles, you can start. Certainly. Uh, Kilburn High Road. 
That's a, that's a bit of bleak to start with, isn't it? You know what, you've got to play the tube station, not the man. Mm. <laughs> ah. Jack, Jack did say about being outside the lateral, and you're yes. definitely outside. You can, you, that's you, not outside. You, 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 can, you can start because it's his, uh, yeah, well, it's because it's his, his first bid. It's my so colour. He's, he's okay, to, okay. You know, it's, it's it's throwing in. Right. Kilburn High Road. Yes. Mm. Uh, Dollis Hill. Oh, mm. very good. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> I've only ever played as an amateur before. This is, uh, this is quite frightening. Uh, I know what you want me to say, but I'm not going to. I am going to say Turnham Green. Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Richard, you're, you're saying Turnham Green, are you? I am, yeah. Let's see. It's right. <laughs> Down to four, not quite. Well, you could have had uh, Basildon, Chingford, or Chelmsford. They're um, <laughs> all pointless. They are. Um, <laughs> okay. They should, they, they should do a celebrity version of that show. <laughs> they keep trying. <laughs> Miles. Uh, uh, the cut. Oh, alliteration here. Right. Cop fosters. Uh, 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 well, Sally, you didn't I go. I haven't gone yet. You, oh, I'm sorry. Go. Sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, no. no so I, that surely puts mm. me in the Hainault loop to go yes, twice. Yes, yeah. I think that's right. <laughs> so I'm going to go straight to Rodding Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to go again and do another jump. And I'm going to go South Woodford. Hey. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. No, no. If you, if, uh, so Sandy, it's my, Sandy it's my... taking the Essex protocol very literally, yeah. and that's quite all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's my first ever time, and I've got to follow a Hainault loop. Brilliant. Uh, Thank actually, you. no, it's now it's Miles. It is back to Miles. Yeah. Of course, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I was thinking of uh, Cuban rules. I apologise. Mm. Oh, you just got to hold on sometimes, haven't you, and see where the game takes you. Mm. Um, oh, uh, Perryvale. Dagenham. Perryvale oh, and Dagenham. Oh, oh. That's swiftly Ouch. taken on now, Barry. Mm. I'm, I might be missing something here, but I'm going to say Bromley by Bow. You're saying Bromley by Bow? Yeah. <laughs> Bad luck. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is, is that sound effect something we're supposed to recognise? It is. It is. It is. Uh, it is uh, uh, a lot of competition between these quiz show hosts, yeah. you can tell. They're just, uh, yes, it is. That means that that's not a, a valid, <laughs> not a valid one to come up with. Bromley by Bo. So you, you have another go, Richard. Have another go. Good. Well, I will go for um, Ravens Court Park. Oh, uh -huh. I know. That's what I was going to. You know what? I should have gone for it in the first place. I was going to, and because it's professional, I was showing off. I went for Bromley. I shouldn't have done. Mm. Well, it's marvellous to hear you thinking out loud. It's uh, <laughs> Sandy. Uh, I, I, I should be kind because it's your first time. But... I've heard that before. <laughs> and, and more, more than once, embarrassingly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and weirdly, it was from Sandy. <laughs> well, I've not been well. No. Um... <laughs> If you've not been well, I can't believe you haven't heard a pointless. <laughs> I do this weird thing. I've taken up reading. Um, <laughs> uh, Mornington Crescent. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, this next round takes a look at uh, popular Essex culture and customs. Culture in Essex dates back millennia, as local archaeologists recently proved after unearthing evidence from the Bronze Age, a Neolithic tanning salon. Um... <laughs> okay, teams, I'm going to read to you a selection of genuine magazine and newspaper articles containing the words of a renowned local celebrity from which certain key passages have been removed. And your job is to fill in the missing bits. And the local celebrity in question is none other than star of the BAFTA-winning reality TV show The Only Way is Essex, Joey Essex. Okay, so can you fill in the missing parts from this interview? Everyone says I'm the Essex version of Jim Broadbent. <laughs> I said, no, Jim Carrey, I sort oh. of rule Essex, he says. 
I'm famous for my Joey Essex words. If I call someone a pair of Capri Suns, I'm... Using up 50% of my vocabulary. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling them really silly. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I wasn't born in Essex, you know, but I was called Essex and then I moved to Essex, which is... Which is why there's a petition to rename me Joey Australia. <laughs> Uh, which is which is crazy. <laughs> when I was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, some people thought I asked stupid questions. Questions like, who's the Prime Minister of... Nando's. <laughs> no, who's the Prime Minister of Essex? <laughs> and are Richard and Judy the ones who... Do that show at the seaside with a crocodile and a baby. <laughs> Um, are Richard and Judy the ones who created the world? What? <laughs> I wasn't the cleverest person at school. <laughs> it's true, I still can't tell the time, but I don't have to. I just look at... The moon, except in the daytime. <laughs> I just look at my phone. One bonfire night, my sister Frankie asked me if I knew the history of Guy Fawkes, and I said he was the guy who... Invented Fawkes. <laughs> <laughs> I said he was the guy who died on the cross. <laughs> is, it, um, is it worth us making these things up at all? <laughs> I think the first girl I fancied was basically a typical Essex girl with perfect white teeth and... Creosote on her face. <laughs> <laughs> and tan skin. Oh. She, <laughs> she, was, she was called Rosie, but everyone called her... Frank. <laughs> called her Bud. Um, I only pull good-looking girls. My mates pull anything, especially James. He would pull the plug on a life support machine to charge his phone. <laughs> he, would, he would pull an alien. Unlike most of my mates, I've never gone for girls with big dads. <laughs> uh, with big boobs. Uh, boobs are weird, really, aren't they? What are they made of? They're like bits of... Cottage cheese in a dog poo bag. <laughs> channel him now. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like bits of jelly. And, um, I'm, I'm actually quite good at cooking. That's what I like doing. Today I cooked eggs. Using a toaster for four hours. <laughs> and met a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> no, today I cooked eggs on toast. My favourite place for a takeaway is Two Kitchens. And it's in Loughton. You probably haven't heard of it if you don't live in Essex, but it's very... Confusing, because they have two kitchens. <laughs> it's very well known. The sushi in there is like... Fish, only not as warm. <laughs> the, the sushi in there is like going into Nobu. Um, growing up in Essex, the ultimate status symbol was a set of... Married parents. <laughs> It's all right for you, I've got to come back here on tour. <laughs> not, not anymore, you don't. <laughs> it was a, a set of wheels. Um, my first car was a silver Ford Fiesta. One day, bang, boof, all this smoke started coming out of it, and I thought, I hope that doesn't happen to the car. <laughs> uh, I thought, what the hell, and I left it on the road. Um, Clothes are a status symbol in Essex, so you always have to spend a lot of money on your wardrobe. I once splashed out a thousand pounds on a Louis Vuitton... ...suitcase and had to apologise to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> a Louis Vuitton tracksuit. 
I couldn't believe it when I bought my own place. I was buzzing. It's such a sick flat. My bedroom's got a walk-in clinic. <laughs> walk-in wardrobe that lights up as soon as you go in. <laughs> Probably a fridge. <laughs> When I did the show Splash, Tom Daly told me the 20-metre diving board was his second home. I thought that meant... He must have a lot of very narrow furniture. <laughs> he said I thought that meant he lived there. <laughs> in the show, celebrities compete against each other in a diving contest. I wore extra tight, extra short trunks. On the back, they even had... A sign saying front. <laughs> <laughs> they had Essex printed on them. Um, I loved working on OK Magazine's Fun Bingo. I'm the host caller. There are a lot of my phrases in the game that are my sayings like salty potato and all the 966. <laughs> Ream, it's fun. Um, I like watching American TV shows. They're very deep. I'll only turn off the TV if there's something gross or something quite intense, like... Dialogue. <laughs> like with body parts. Um, in my latest TV series, I go to Africa and I'm thrown into... Governing Zimbabwe. <laughs> I'm thrown into all sorts of situations. Compared to Essex, Africa's a lot more... <laughs> Compared to Essex, Africa's a lot more different, obviously. <laughs> they don't really have... Mould and salt, for example. <laughs> they don't really have houses, do they? Um... I like animals, but they must have quite boring lives. The animals in the wild, they can't exactly... Take advantage of the fact that entrance to most museums is free. <laughs> they, <laughs> they can't exactly go clubbing or chat up girls. <laughs> At least the dogs in Essex get to... Go dogging. <laughs> get to wear clothes, is <laughs> even here and he's doing better than us. It's a... exactly. The animals I loved most in the whole wide world were frogs. I was addicted to them. <laughs> Nanny Linda had a boyfriend who had loads of frog spawn and he'd let me take it home and put it in my pond until... Until Nanny Linda pointed out it wasn't frog spawn. <laughs> Take it home and put it in my pond until I could breed frogs by myself. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's very nearly the end of the show, but there is just, just time to fit in around a rodent film club. Uh, Samantha tells me she's just nipping off with a gentleman friend to the local rodent rescue sanctuary to show him the little squirrel she's adopted. She says she'll probably let him hold her little tufty before helping him bury his nuts out in the garden. <laughs> So, teams, I'd like you to suggest film titles likely to prove popular with an audience of rodent lovers. So, uh, you can start, uh, Richard. The best little dormouse in Texas. <laughs> Barry. Four lemmings and a funeral. <laughs> Sandy. Desperately squeaking Susan. <laughs> Miles. The colour gerbil. Saturday Night Beaver. 
The postman always brings mice. <laughs> Ferrets Bueller's day off. <laughs> Cheery rats of fire. <laughs> Rent a kill bill. <laughs> Verminator. The men who stare at stoats. Inglorious mouse turds. <laughs> Verminator 2. Lockstock and two smoking squirrels. <laughs> the sound of mouse sick. Stotal recall. <laughs> or the German film, Das Stut. <laughs> Vole, actually. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the jippy tummy of time confronts the partially thawed prawn of pestilence and the emodium of immortality is powerless to prevent the dastardly diarrhea of destiny, I notice it's the end of the show. So, from the team, Samantha and myself and our audience here in Southend, it's goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Miles Jupp, Richard Altman and Sandy Toxby will be given silly things to do by Jack D with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultants were Ian Pattinson and Fraser Steele. And the producer was John Naismith.